NBC Sports host, and uh, he is the host of Sunday Night Football, the play-by-play voice, and covering the Open Championship, the 151st Open Championship at Royal Liverpool. He's Mike Tirico, and uh, coverage will start NBC at 7 a.m. Eastern. Mike uh, calling his 25th Open Championship. What was it like when you called your first one? I wish I remember, man. It was 97. It was a long time ago. Justin Leonard won. Uh, I, I don't think I knew what I was doing at that point, calling golf. Uh, I only called about four or five events. But uh, I do remember Justin had a great Sunday, uh, a steady Sunday. Other guys had a chance to catch him. And Justin was here on his own. It wasn't a uh, big family or girlfriend or wife at the time. It, it was just Justin and his caddy ordering a pizza after winning the Open. It was it was pretty cool, pretty cool scene. And we got to relive that a few times and work with Justin over the last couple of years here. So that was kind of cool. But I'm wondering, when, when it comes to an audience, knowing mm-hmm. terminology, you know, because if you right. call it a sand right. trap or a bunker, and then, you know, the golf uh, cogniacente is going to come right after you there. But football yeah. or yeah. horse racing, give me the sport where you got to stay in your lane and be careful because they're there to correct you. Probably golf early on because so many of the participants or the viewers are participants. They play all the time. You know, you're members at a club. You, you play with your foursome every week. You have a certain time you play on weekends. So I, I think probably golf as much as any because the people who are watching, they know the language, they play, and you can tell a fraud right away, somebody who doesn't know the sport. Fortunately, I played not well, but played at that time. So it wasn't like it was all brand new to me. But uh, I, I think, Dan, if I knew then – what a career pivot point that what might have been. I don't know if I necessarily would have said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do this. But I was lucky. I was surrounded by Curtis Strange, Judy Rankin, Bob Rosberg, Steve Melnick, some really good and talented people that kind of kept me in a place where I could succeed early on. And you know, 25 opens and 27 years of doing this later, it's, uh, it's fun to be the old guy, I guess, every once in a while. Do you remember when the story came out that I was up for the job to do golf? Oh, you know what? I had forgotten about that. Yes. That's right. Yeah. So, so was, why didn't you? Um, I I never You're... talked to anybody other than it was in Rudy Martsky's column in USA Today. <laughs> I'm getting ready to do the 11 o'clock Sports Center, and one of our bosses realizes the next day that it's going to be made official that you're going to be the voice of golf for ABC. Okay. This I, is in '96. Okay. So I'm walking down to the set. And one of our former bosses go, uh, hey, can you come here? I, you know, I got five minutes to get from one building right. to the other to do Sports Center. Yeah, Calls exactly. me in and he goes, hey, um, Tarico's going to get the golf job. And I go, what? Yeah, he goes, yeah, uh, Tarico's going to do golf uh, and, uh, and, and you're, you're going to just stay doing Sports Center. I then have to go over and do a sports center after I just right. had that. And, and it was one of those moments where I go, I didn't, I didn't volunteer. I didn't ask. I was just told that I was up for the job, but that's know. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So you, I, you I, stole um, it from I me. Did, I, I, I'm sure I did. Uh, cause, cause you were clamoring. I did, uh, <laughs> two, two senior tour events in 96. And, uh, th- those are the first two opportunities I had to do golf. I actually got the chance to do it because, Jim Kelly, not the Bills quarterback, but yeah. Jim Kelly who was a terrific sportscaster, a bunch of assignments. He was doing the America's Cup in San Diego, oh, and yeah. uh, they needed somebody to fill in. I did, I did two golf events with Andy North and Gary Koch and Bob Murphy. And those guys, those guys were uh, were godsends for me to to help get started. So, so maybe you would be here, and I'd be sitting in your <laughs> chair right now. If it was different, if Rudy would have gotten it right, I don't know. What would you shoot on that course right now if you were playing? Oh my God, <laughs> it, it, it it certainly begins with a one. Uh, okay, it, you know I'm I'm a fourteen, so I'm in the high eighties, low nineties. If I'm if I'm playing my average, I can shoot a little better. I have shot a lot worse, including the last couple of weeks. I can't drive it right now, uh, but I'd love to see. 10, 15 index players come out and try to play these courses because you're, you're shooting triple digits. It's so hard. It's so fine. You know, you're not raking it up from two and a half feet. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> get that up for your six and move on, you know? you got to hole everything out, and you're going to miss a few of those. This course, like all the courses for the Open, it's the wind. If we get some wind, 
then you really have a story. And I was just up on the 14th tee with Rory McIlroy, Cheryl Hatton, Tommy Fleetwood, and Victor Hovland. And it's a practice round. You guys hit a couple of balls. Rory put a two iron in the fairway. The other three guys hit two drivers and five of the six drives missed the fairway. And they, now you're hitting it at a rough yay high and all that. So it, it takes forever and would be a high number for most average players. But are you rooting for that as a broadcaster of yeah. that you want the weather, you want the conditions, you want us to almost feel it as we're watching this? I think you want some. But on Thursday and Friday, you'd like it to be fair because you can get play early Thursday, weather's good, front or a storm or winds coming in Thursday night, Friday morning. So the guys who go late Thursday, early Friday, they just get a raw deal with the draw. And then guys in that half, it's pretty balanced with good players. Guys in that half of the draw just get taken out of the tournament. As long as it's fair to get you to the weekend. But I think this major, more than anything else, begs for a little rain, a little weather, a little weather, a little wind. If you sit and watch the open, you get up early to watch it. You just want to see people fight. I mean, the whole world is experiencing record heat right now. Yeah. And it was 63 degrees here yesterday. I was two layers walking around the golf course. It was a cold rain. It, it's just different. And I think that's why this open and this major, I should say, has um, has stayed with its unique power to connect with American fans. Because we don't see golf or conditions like this very often. He's Mike Tirico, NBC Sports host, play-by-play -play voice of uh, Sunday Night Football. Patrick Cantlay and Brooks Kepka are paired together, and Brooks <laughs> played with Patrick Cantlay before and said it was death because he takes forever. Now, I know they manipulate the you know the pairings here. Do you mm -hmm. think that they did this on purpose to put Brooks Kepka with Patrick Cantlay with the possibility of somebody being murdered? <laughs> I don't think that's the outcome that they saw. Oh, okay, okay. But, but but there's always been a little bit of a sense of humor to put some of these groupings <laughs> together in Thursday and Friday. And I don't know if it was humor or if it was just, yeah, we're going to put them together. Uh, but here it is, and it's hard. Kepka has said it publicly, right? Yeah. And Ka Patrick Hanley is not a fast player. So is Brooks already slightly defeated – in terms of his mental approach. I don't think so because the majors, he blocks them out. He loves play, but he, he'll be unhappy. If Patrick is taking forever and it's a slow day, and majors can get slow. If there's a little bit of wind, there's a backup on a par five, somebody's making an eight, needs a ruling, it can slow down. So it can take five hours. Brooks can run a little hot in those situations. Is he strong <laughs> enough to forget about it and just play? I'll tell you the one thing you'll see. If Cantlay plays first and then kept the plays, and that could often be the case because Brooks hits it so far, man, as soon as that ball lands to the other guy, Brooks is over and ready to fire. <laughs> he, he's, a, he's a hard guy for the golf producer on the TV side. you got to be ready because Brooks is going to fire as soon as that ball comes to a stop. How much is tape and how much is live when you're doing play-by-play? -play? Yeah. It depends on who's producing at the different networks. It also depends on the flow of the golf course. You go to commercial, you've got to come back and get caught up because the action, it's the one sport the action doesn't stop, right, during breaks. The, the other thing that I think people should realize, it's easy to be critical of what's on tape, what's live. And there could be 40 golf balls in motion at the same time. At no other sport do you have anything more than one ball in motion at one time. So you've got all these choices. So while you're playing, Fritzy, well, maybe that's a bad example of Fritzy, somebody else might be hitting a shot, right? right. So you're playing, I'm watching you live, and you're a slower player. But I'm staying over because you've got an eagle putt. That means I'm missing two shots that I'd like to show. So you should, I think, the audience should accept you coming back and saying, hey, this, this was while Dan was playing, here are these two shots. I'd say that the later you get into the weekend, the more is live okay. because there are less shots you have to show. But on Thursday and Friday – those feature groups, the main groups, like we have uh, Rory, Rahm, and Rose together right before 10 a.m. Eastern time, you'll see a lot of their stuff live. A lot of the other stuff around them will be taped because you're watching those three guys play. So you got to balance it and figure it out. Is there a more rooted-for athlete right now than Rory McIlroy? Given everything that's happened, he was the face of the PGA yeah, Tour, uh -huh. stood up to the Live Tour, 
The Americans, you know, appreciated mm-hmm. this. Uh, he's been playing great. Just won the Scottish Open. Yeah, I, I don't want to just blurt it out and say yes, because that's my initial reaction is yes. For all the reasons you just said, I'm trying to think, you know, outside of Kansas City, Mahomes is likable. Steph has a likable quality about him, as you saw with the uh, event in Lake Tahoe, the American Century, right? It was like, that was really cool. The reaction on social media, the Steph's hole in one was, wow, that, that's, that was pretty awesome. But they've won recently. Yeah, exactly. But I, I would I would say yes, and here's why I'd say yes with Rory. Tiger's not in the not in the mix right now. Rory probably moves the meter in terms of ratings as much as any golfer in the U for American fans, and he's not American. He was in Scotland, taking the Scottish Open title with back to back birdies in the last two holes out of the hands of a Scot. Yeah, Scottish players don't win, and the crowd went nuts. It wasn't like, oh, polite applause, great player won. He took it from our guy. They were going crazy. That tells you how popular he is. Uh, up on the 14th tee, uh, if Rory heard his name 70 times about an hour ago when I was up there with him, that's a, that's a low estimate. Uh, I would say certainly in golf, and as I just go through the sports, probably as popular globally as any guy is right now. But for the reasons you mentioned, he stood by his word, turned down, Six hundred, seven hundred million dollars to stay true to his word. That resonates, I think, with fans in 2023. I'll leave you with this because people brought this up. Some people on this show brought it up. Hey, could you see Steph mm-hmm. Curry, maybe when he's done playing basketball at the age of 39 or 40, playing like a corn fairy tour, something like that? And I said, yes. you know, but there's a difference between being a scratch golfer and being a professional golfer. And Steph Curry you know, barely beat out Marty Fish, and nobody's going, hey, could Marty Fish play on the Corn Ferry Tour? Well, we saw Smoltz play, Yeah, right? We yeah. saw Smoltz play, and, and he did okay, right? And Tony so, Romo. And Tony Romo. And Steph is a phenomenal athlete, and he's still young enough at this point, right, and in great shape, hasn't taken the beating that Tony took physically, right? And Steph is so good right now as he is a top-level active player in his sport. So, yeah, you're going to get some degradation with a few years. But let's now say that this great athlete is putting all of that time, instead of into shooting, into his golf game. Because his golf game is at a pretty high level. These other guys are really, really good. And they do it under pressure. I think that's the difference, Dan. You can get a good golfer, but around a crowd, they're not as good. I think a crowd makes a guy like Steph better. Yeah, I think he thrives on that yeah. pressure and the moment and all that. So I'd say he could he could play. I don't know if he could play on the Corn Ferry Tour and prove himself over time. But if you put him in an event, I, th- I think he'd do all right, especially after he was done playing uh, his basketball. A traditional meal that you've had, the best meal you've had there of local fare. Yeah, fish and chips. I mean, you have to have fish and chips. Now, we're not in Scotland because you could have haggis, and I know that you know what haggis is. I'm sure you've had haggis. Blood have pudding? You? Have you had blood pudding? I've had blood pudding in Scotland, but we're not in Scotland, okay. so I can avoid those yeah. delicacies. <laughs> I, 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 I've, I know 25 years of doing the Open, I've never done the broadcast in a kilt. You've worn a kilt on the air, haven't you? Yeah. I got yeah. one on right now. <laughs> Obviously. Of course you do. Yeah, this, and, for the segment. Know, yeah. I'd ask you if you have anything else on under the kill. However, <laughs> we're out of time for the segment. From yes, we I are. See. Because, yes, we are. <laughs> because you're doing golf and I'm not. Stop it. You're in the cave. Look at you. You've got, you've got all those things around. You've got the legends of the business behind you. What more could a man ask for? You've got the USA thing up over your head. And in case anybody tuned in didn't know you're an American, we know that. It's perfect. Have fun, Mike. <laughs> I miss you. See you Thank pal. you, buddy. That's Mike Tirico. He's uh, covering the uh, 151st Open Championship.